In the last segment, in the first part of this lecture, I presented to you the idea that um, uh, perhaps symbolic interaction is, might be a good strategy for us to explore what is the nature of, uh, on a, of a virtual community or, a, or a, an e-tribe, as we're calling it, and exploring the digital. I just want to emphasize this is one strategy that you can follow other strategies, but this might be a, a useful one if you would like to use it. And, and this week we're running an, an exercise uh, using symbolic interactionism as a tool to explore more in, more in depth um, what's going on with uh, electronic tribes. So let's continue with the exploration of the different characteristics of, um, of, a, of a virtual community. Um, a question that is asked by, by our author um, is how, how is that a community, a virtual community develops? What makes a virtual community unfold in, in, um, in, in fullness, um, as it were, um, through time in, in an electronic space? Because we know for a fact that uh, many folks would start things that might not take hold, but uh, when, when is a virtual community taking hold, according to Terry Ross? And, and what she finds based on other readings is that uh, a community will develop when enough people interact for long enough periods of time with um, sufficient intensity or feeling, as she says, uh, in, 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 in that it forms webs of personal relations in cyberspace. I am particularly fond of this definition because, as you probably know, um, we, we have seen the social from Weber and on from, from the time of Max uh, Weber or Weber uh, in the late uh, 19th century, early 20th century to our days as, as uh, nothing but webs of, of meaning, webs of relationships. So it, it really does apply very meaningfully. So when we have a virtual community that is solid, that it's to be considered a virtual community on its own right, it's when you have enough people for a long enough period of time and you have the creation of webs of personal relations in this digital realm. Um, they, they, uh, according to, to uh, Terry Ross, what makes these communities particularly appealing to people is the fact that each individual has a full control as to when they want to become and for how long they want to remain citizens of these realms. So in that sense, there's, there's major freedom of, of ascription. This doesn't happen in real life. In real life, we're constrained by space, we're constrained by resources, and you, we're really often, uh, in most cases, geolocated, and and that's who we are, right? We not often have a chance to make a decision uh, as to who are we nationals from what country. Uh, even if people say, if one uh, wins the elections, I'll go to Canada, how many of them will actually do that, right? Not many, because we are deeply rooted in, in uh, our geographical selves. Something slightly different happens in, in virtual communities. And hence, as I was saying in my last presentation, my hesitation as to whether or not we can, uh, in earnest, consider virtual communities true communities or tribes, uh, true tribes. But I think the, that it, uh, it certainly quacks and moves like a, like a dog, so it might be a dog. According to Ross, when, when she is exploring craster.org, uh, and uh, we move into seeing how she does the analysis. And I really want you to go back to this chapter and reading, this is the chapter six of the book, and see how she does the analysis. She, what she sees is a special, a peculiar um, trait in this, um, in this community. And the peculiar trait, and I would give it to her, is the quality of the dialogue. The quality of the dialogue that happens there, the degree to which people engage and that uh, she finds um, not that common of a characteristic when she has explored other realms, other communities online. So what makes the community a community that is special and dense and vibrant is the quality of the dialogue that occurs. So a dialogue, 
um, dialogue, um, it's pervasive. It's uh, something that is generalized as a defining feature of humanity. And, and if that's what defines humanity, how can this community not be a community in a, in a full sense, right? To be means to communicate, according to Bakhtin. To be means to communicate. If we do not communicate, are we? And that's a, that's a very good philosophical, sociological question to ask. So if you have a strong communication, then, then you have reality there. Um, how can dialogue be attained in virtual communities? And here's the problem with the virtual communities, is that the identities that are there, uh, how can we consider those identities to be uh, transparent and real? Because uh, me and I, I don't know about you, but I do have a web, uh, 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 an email address with an alternative um, identity that I use for every time a website requires my password for identification and and confirmation and I don't want to give them my hyper-connected uh, real name then I'll use this alternative one because I really the one don't want to be to be known and then I, I play by the rules and I use my my um, crafted identity my mask identity um, so how do you know that uh, the people you're relating to are for real how do you know that they are really what they're saying and, and, and showing me they are I don't know. That's a big question to ask. I don't know that there's a there's a, um, a fine answer. Maybe we have different realities, and we can play with those different realities in terms of the self. But um, the other problem that uh, that you might find in in virtual communities is that uh, certain rules of the quorum and conduct that apply in in the classroom in in the shopping mall in the coffee shop that, that uh, we abide by uh it seems to be fair game for questioning and, and breaking um, in terms of rules when we're on the on on the digital realm just very easily just take a look at a um a forum on any specific uh, conversation on on the candidates for elections today you will see how people really are making disparaging and, and unacceptable comments that I don't think they would make if they were in a, in a focus group or in a, in a social setting where, where you have people in front of you for real, right? So those, uh, let's not get that excited about the reality without being critical about it, because uh, it is problematic. The reality of the virtual community is nonetheless problematic. So. Let's switch gears and move into uh, move from questioning the the possibility of having a virtual community and just reading about the um, the uh, exciting uh, approval that we get from from um, from Ross in terms of what's going on in the community she's studying into how are you going to study your community this semester? So how do we analyze the interaction that is happening in the virtual community? So remember, we're going to be trying to identify symbols. We're going to be trying to make a reflection on self and how self is presented and, and portrayed. And then the actual, we're going to analyze the actual interactions in those sites. If we're going to follow um, symbolic interactionism as a, as, a, as a way to explore these websites. So we are going to analyze interaction in a given virtual community. So this is what we need to identify and this is what we need to observe. We need to, uh, we're, we're going to be using postings and topics as the key element, the subject matter that we're analyzing. If we're biologists and we were looking at unicellular organisms, well, well our subject of observations is not unicellular organisms, but it, it's going to be postings and topics. We're going to have to discover the symbols they're using and are used and applied in the in, in that context. We are going to have to uncover the prevailing rules of interaction. Who's in and who is out and what, what are you supposed to do and when. Uh, I'll give you an example. If uh, I am a, a, a recurrent um, visitor and user of a website that is called uh, Word, um, oh, I 
just blanked out on that one. Word, word reference. And in word reference, you have different uh, levels of users uh, from, from least experience to most experience and levels of expertise that is determined by the number of meaningful um, contributions to the discussion. So for example, if I'm, uh, I'm arguing about the meaning of a translation, how do you translate uh, uh, by far in Spanish? And what's the right translation for that one? Sometimes you have idioms that are really difficult to translate. So if you are contributing in a man meaningful and, and systematic way, then you become an expert member of the community and you have access and, and, and possibilities that you wouldn't have if you're just visiting for once or twice as most of the users of the place um, happen to, to be doing. So, so you have a community within a larger community. That's, uh, so you have to take a look and discover those prevailing rules. And then you're going to observe not just the symbols and the rules, but how people apply and use those symbols and rules, and how those uh, the usage becomes um, a relationship, relation, relational space that is more or less intense, and that really gives substance to to the place that we're visiting. Uh, so that be the way of doing this. Um, and last but not least, Ross gives us another really interesting uh, take on how to, and what to look for when we're visiting places. To assess the quality of the interaction, she has looked at the following three elements. Participation, so how many are participating, what are they doing? The commitment, which is what I was referring to, to what extent I'm actually committed to being there consistently and providing something. And then the reciprocity, to what extent this is really a place where the lines come and go in multiple directions. Um, tend to think and conceptualize these places as webs and networks with nodes and, and then the nodes are receiving and sending. So if you see that with intensity, then you have a community. Um, I continue to go with, uh, with a little bit of a puzzlement with the title. Maybe you can help me with this one. What is Ross, uh, what's the meaning of the title of this chapter? Don't date Crafter Bait, dialogue and resistance on, on Crafter.org. I don't get it. Maybe you can help me with the title. Anyways, I'm going to close this presentation by inviting you to consider this as a model that you might be able to use as you explore your community um, and, uh, and as you share with us your, your um, ideas for crafting a paper, uh, which is what we're going to be doing as an exercise for problem solving uh, this week. Sayonara, see you later, talk to you soon.